So the other day I needed a square for, for a project and I have two squares. I have a really large framing square and I have this small tri-square at the back here hanging on the wall. And neither one of those was gonna do the job. So instinctively I sat down with Inkscape and I made one and here it is. And it occurred to me that I make a lot of tools for myself as I need them and you might be interested too. So if you're interested in seeing how I make tools, then stick around. So as I mentioned, I'm making tools in this video and in this case, measuring tools specifically. Uh, now the real question you'd, you'd, you'd ask is why on earth would you want to do this? Because you can go to Amazon and you can buy a 30 centimeter ruler for, you know, $2. It's really not that expensive. So there's got to be a more obvious reason of why, why you should do this. Well, there's two actually. The first one is uh, to make uh, your measuring tools application specific. So in my case, uh, if I have cutting boards and I make quite a few of them, uh, I, I have rulers or squares actually that are exactly the width and length of the cutting boards that I'm making. So uh, in that case, I have a tool that will perfectly specify you know, the dimensions of my, of my project so that I know if I have to add more, uh, more wood, I have to make the cutting board wider or something, uh, I'll, I'll know right away. So anyway, there's, there's, there's that reason. The other reason is you can customize your tools. So I won't show it to you in this video, but I have rulers, for example, where I have a hole at every one centimeter increment. And the reason for that is if you lay this ruler down and you put a pencil in at the zero where, where you want the center of a circle, and put, a, put another pencil in uh, one of the holes out to the diameter of the circle you want, actually the radius in this case, uh, you can quickly draw a circle. And you could say, well, you know, I could use a compass, but the problem with a compass is it punches a hole. It's got a point in it. So y you don't really want to do that sometimes. You just want to, uh, you know, take a blunt pencil and put it down in the center. And then when you're done your circle, you have no damage to the material at all. So, so that's why you do it. And, and uh, you know, and you can do other things as well. So now what I wanted to do in this video is show you from one end to the other, uh, starting with Inkscape, how you get accurate measurements in Inkscape so that when you uh, engrave a scale onto a piece of material, it's the actual size you want it. And uh, you know we'll go through that. We'll do a quick preview of some of the cutting and engraving that happens here. I'll show you all the, all the uh, tools, quote unquote tools that I'm making here. They're all, again, they're all measurement tools and I'll keep one as a surprise for the end, just in case you need a, a different kind of tool or maybe you want some tools for your kids if they're playing around the workshop. Uh, so uh, with that, we can get started. And uh, by the end of this, you'll be able to make some of your own measurement tools. So I wasn't planning on going into super detail on how I actually created these because in essence, it's relatively simple, we'll say. So we have generally an outline of some sort, in this case for the ruler, uh, it's just a rectangle that uh, in this case is 303 millimeters long and that's because there's a little bit of extra at each end and the height is 40 millimeters. And you know you could create one of these fairly simple. It's just a it's just a, a scale, some numbers, and in my case I put a logo on the screen here as well. But uh, what I did want to show you is how to create the actual scale. So what I'm going to do is I'll go down below here and I'll show you how I created this, and that should be enough to get you going for just about any kind of measuring instrument. So what I'm going to do is bring the the line drawing tool down, and I'll start a line. And it'll be a square line, of course. And uh, just for ease here, we'll make it uh, 0.1 millimeter thick so that it doesn't overtake everything on the, on the screen. And what I'm gonna do here is make it, right now it's eight millimeters long. I'll make it two millimeters long. So and we can zoom in on it here so we can see. So there's our first line and call this the zero millimeter line. Now the way to create the scale is you take this and duplicate it. And I'll use the, the menu here for the first one, but I'll use shortcuts after that. You can see the shortcut in, at, at least on the Mac is, is the uh, option D key. It's I believe control D on the Windows machine. Uh, but I'll duplicate that and I'm gonna add one to it, one millimeter, and you can see it moved over. Now you could continue to do that 10 times. We're gonna make basically one centimeter of scale here. 
but you could also you could also make this a little faster. You could select both of these, and instead of adding one this time, we can add two, and we could again select them all and duplicate. And instead of adding two now, we're going to add four, and that gives us eight. So we need two more. So we'll just duplicate these last two and add two. And there you go, we have 10. Now we want, the way the scale works up above here is we want the basic millimeters to be shorter, then we have the middle length, and then we have the full centimeter length, uh, which is 10 millimeters. And we need to make those a little longer. So what I'm gonna do is start at the fifth one. And instead of that one being two millimeters, I'll make it three millimeters. And then the last one here, I'll make uh, instead of two millimeters, I'll make four millimeters. And you can see how the scale got created there. Now, really that's it. So what I'm gonna do is group this. And because it currently looks like it's upside down, I'll just rotate it here. Uh, and now the scale at this point is just as simple as taking this object that we have and duplicating it. And when we, instead of doing you know some random number of some smaller size we're going to do a 10 so then you, you get a full scale and and you can just keep repeating that and that's really all i did to make this entire scale like i said you can make these fairly quickly so i made the bottom scale first and then i duplicated the entire scale uh, rotated it or mirrored it rather uh, vertically and then stuck it on the top and and after that, it's really just pasting labels in, in there for each of the numbers and use whatever font makes sense to you. I just happened to choose some uh, font with no serifs and, and made it bold so that the numbers stand out. So there you go, there's the ruler and, and all the other ones are kind of the same. Now the protractor is a bit different because, uh, because things are, are, uh, are circular, of course, and the way to do that is uh, create uh, basically a hash mark uh, on each side of the protractor, group that, and then rotate that around 360. And if you only want a semicircular protractor, uh, ungroup all of those, those, those hash marks and delete the ones that are below your, the half of your protractor and you get a protractor out of it. And the numbers work the same way, except you lay them out on a, on a, uh, on a path and all I really did was draw a circle and then selected the all of the numbers I wanted on my protractor and said put them on this path and there you go they came out into a nice circular pattern so so that's it I, like I said I didn't want to go into too much detail here because it really isn't all that hard uh, certainly uh, you know I can create a full-length video of this if people are really interested but it's you know, it's not really that difficult. Uh, what's, what's more important now at this point is when you actually do the, the laser cut here, which we'll do next, in order to make this make sure this is accurate, we know it's accurate in Inkscape, but you, you now need to make sure your laser scale is accurate. So uh, you have to do whatever, whatever means you, you need to do to get your laser calibrated. Uh, otherwise your ruler won't be the right length here, so. Uh, on, on mine, I, I cut it on my, uh, my SP3624, which is my DIY laser, uh, and I know that one is perfectly scaled. I'm a little less sure about the scale on my Muse 3D, but uh, you can compensate that for that either in the drawing or in the, uh, in the software uh, in RE3. So, uh, you know, one way or the other, you can get it scaled. Anyway, that's, that's the, the design here.
Okay, let's take a look at some of the results and uh, see what we have. So first we have uh, the ruler, of course, uh, and you saw the drawing. Uh, it's just a standard 30 centimeter ruler. Uh, all of my tools are metric, so if you needed an in scale, you could do it. But, uh, you know, here we go. Uh, next is the protractor, and you, again, you saw the drawing. Now, I did put a small hole down in the bottom, and the reason for that is if you want to poke a pencil or something in there and do a rotation of some sort, you can. Uh, third on the list is my 45-45-90 triangle. Again, measurements down each, each of the short sides in case you need to measure something. And finally, we have the square, the piece that started all of this and inspired this video. Uh, as you can see, very nice handheld kind of square. It's not too big, not too small, perfect for typical projects. And finally, last surprise here, uh, I, did, I built a quick little caliper project just to see if I could. Uh, this one is out of wood rather than acrylic. And uh, you might want one of these if you don't already have a caliper or uh, you know, maybe you just need something in a hurry that's possibly disposable. Uh, sometimes, you know, if you have kids in your workshop sometimes and they're trying to meet their own makers, maybe they need a, a set of tools, you can, make, you can make one of these for them as well. So, so uh, there you go, there's all of our tools for today. So now you can see how easy it was to create that. A uh, bit of magic in Inkscape, but not too much. Uh, for the most part, it's laying down some numbers, uh, which are just text elements and uh, creating an outline for whatever measurement device you're trying to create. Uh, what I'll do is I'll put a link down below uh, for everybody if you want to download the uh, SVG files for the ruler and the protractor. If you want the full set and you're a Patreon subscriber, I'll pr provide a link on Patreon where you can pull them down. Uh, if you aren't a, a member of Patreon, uh, by all means, click the link in the, in the uh, upper right corner here. And, uh, and join, it really helps out the channel. Uh, as always, I'll put a video in the other corner that I think you might enjoy. If you're interested, go watch that and I'll see you over there. Otherwise, get out there and make your world and I'll see you next time.